Hi, my name is Reef Kassam, and today we're going to have a topic on WeLab reaping advantages with multi cloud capabilities and how you can do that too. Before we get started, uh, first, I want to, on behalf of on the entire NeoDB team, I want to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for all the frontline workers out there who are working very hard to keep us all safe and healthy during these troubling times. The world is definitely different from uh, what it was a few months ago, and this event is actually a, a key uh, example. Instead of us all being uh, in Madrid at an event in a hotel, we are now watching this virtually uh, from the comfort of our own homes across the world. Even before COVID-19, uh, agility has been on top of minds for a lot of companies. And this uh, survey here shown by McKinsey lists agility as the top reason why companies are doing IT modernization efforts. And agility, as you know, allows companies to adapt to different situations. Previously, that could have been anything from uh, a new competitive startup or even um, changing behaviors from your customers based on their mobile banking interactions. But what this crisis has shown us is that agility is even more important for uh, planning for unexpected or adapting to unexpected situations like a global pandemic. And Cloud, cloud technologies have always been sort of key enablers uh, of agility. And what we want to talk about today is how uh, cloud and especially, especially multi-cloud uh, capabilities allow you to be more uh, agile and more, be able to adapt to changes in the cloud world. We've all been talking about cloud for a while now, um, but a lot of that buzz really is from internet companies and social media companies who were actually born in the cloud. So they're already there. Um, and even in today's world, they are reaping the, the benefits of being agile and adapting uh, um, to all the, the different changes in, in, in expectations and workloads and, and demands. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of mature enterprises, uh, really only 20 or 25% of their workloads have been uh, migrated to the cloud. And, and that 20, 25% is really um, applications that are either new applications or applications that existed before that were simpler to move because they had no dependencies or they were small or, or they, had, uh, they were built on latest technologies, right? Unfortunately, there's still a large portion of workloads in these enterprises that are difficult to move. And that could be because of complex dependencies with other services or other systems in the in, on-premises or it could be due to hardware restrictions like they run on mainframes or they've got other clustering technologies that they use, or it could be data security issues, right? It could be issues that prevent the data being uh, moved to the cloud, right? But this, this idea of uh, moving to the cloud for these enterprises will take time, right? And so we will be in this state where there will be workloads running on-premises, there'll be workloads running in the cloud. And so you've got this quote unquote hybrid mode where it will be used and, and, and prevalent for a very long time. And this is borne out by um, RightScale's report. And this is, again, a 2019 report, State of the Cloud report, that said a majority of the companies out there are actually using multiple clouds already. And now those multiple clouds, even in some examples, are some companies are up to five different cloud providers, and that's both public and private cloud uh, explorations. But there's multiple cloud providers um, and even also hybrid deployment. For uh, multi multiple clouds, typically that grows organically um, in, within a customer. So for example, think of a business unit, they are, have an application deployed in AWS. They could be using AWS because AWS has a service that's needed for that application. But there could be another business unit in that same company that is deploying their application in GCP. And that, be, could, that could be because um, G, they have resources or that people on staff that are familiar with GCP and that's the easiest cloud for them to use. And so th these companies are developing uh, capabilities to deploy to multiple clouds, but it's within these business units and there's no uh, higher strategy or there's no leverage of the fact that they actually have multiple multi-cloud capabilities. And quite honestly, not having a, a, a cohesive multi-cloud strategy um, misses the opportunity for a lot, a lot of companies to become more agile in the cloud space. So what, we talk about multi-cloud, what, what does multi-cloud mean, right? And there's actually two things to it. 
There's cloud agnostic and cloud native. Let's say you've taken, you've got an application and you, you take the application and you quote unquote lift and shift it into the cloud. That's basically what that means is you've taken the application as it is and are now running it on a set of servers and storage that are in the cloud. So you're basically using the cloud as a hosting provider. You're just using their, their, their infrastructure, their, their servers, their, their storage to run your, your virtual machine or whatever it is for your application. So if you do that and you take that application and move it to, to the cloud uh, and you move it to AWS, you have a generic cloud solution that is locked into a single cloud. So you're in the bottom left-hand quadrant in this diagram. If you take, let's say you do some more work and you say, okay, I'm going to take this application and also make it available to run on GCP or Azure. And so now that same application, I can deploy it either into Azure, AWS, or GCP because all, they all have uh, server utilization, storage that you can buy a, as you need. So they all have the sort of the basic infrastructure capabilities that you can leverage. And so you now a lift and shift a strategy, but for multi-cloud. So that's great. Now you protect it against um, different clouds, but it's really basic uh, infrastructure that you're using. What you really need to do is think about um, migrating that application and using a sort of a cloud native approach. Cloud native means you're actually taking that application and leveraging certain components and pieces and services of that particular cloud provider, right? So you're actually using the services that that cloud provider provides in either a managed service or just a usage uh, uh, way. And so I've taken now this application, it's now in the cloud and I'm actually leveraging some of the services of that cloud. And again, let's say we, we take advantage of, of some AWS services. And so now I'm in the top left uh, corner where I've now got an application that's cloud native, but it is built for a single cloud. As you are thinking about your cloud strategies, as you're thinking about migrating to the cloud, we recommend you think about a strategy that gets you to the top right. That is a strategy that gets you applications that are both cloud agnostic and cloud native. So what does that mean? That means I've got an application that I could run in any cloud that I want, AWS, Azure, uh, GCP, and in those clouds, when I deploy it, I'm actually leveraging the native services that those that each cloud provides. Right? So I've got a solution now that I can deploy anywhere I want. And that solution is not just sort of lowest common denominator. It's using the best of uh, that cloud uh, service, that, that best that that cloud service can provide. OK, so what are the, the benefits of, of multi-cloud? Why, why would somebody uh, spend the work, spend the time to to build a cloud agnostic and, and cloud native uh, solution. So the, the first and foremost benefit is this idea of increased agility. Now we've talked about it, but having a cloud native and a cloud agnostic solution allows you to respond to changes in the cloud environment very quickly, right? One example is an outage, right? The cloud providers, that the, while, while they have great service, they, they still do um, suffer from cloud outages. We hear them about in the news and they could be up to an hour or maybe even more, up to a day in terms of outage. If you are have a solution in a cloud and that cloud has an outage and you can't move off that cloud, then unfortunately your customers will suffer. Your brand will suffer, your company will suffer because that outage will affect your, your, your service that you're providing to your customers. So uh, a side benefit or another big benefit of, of a multi-cloud strategy is this idea of a high availability. So the highest availability you can get in a cloud environment. You have the ability to deploy a solution either in any cloud you want or in multiple clouds simultaneously, right? And so in the case of an outage in one cloud, the other cloud is still up and running and your customers can still access that service through the other cloud. Right? Another benefit is changing regulations. This whole cloud space is uh, new. Uh, regulations are still catching up to what um, the financial institutes want to do in the cloud and they're, they're, they're changing. Um, with the ability to have a multi-cloud strategy, you can adapt to those changing regulations. Uh, let's, for example, let's uh, take an event that um, the regulators don't like how a particular data service is being stored or how data is being stored in a particular cloud, and they may blackball that cloud. I doubt it's going to happen, but you never know, right? If things happen or things change, if you're stuck on that cloud, then you've got a lot of work to fix it or change it or move to a different cloud. If you start with a cloud agnostic solution and a cloud native solution, you can adapt to those changing regulations without any sort of overhead from your, from your uh, perspective. 
And the other one is, is uh, uh, sort of a price uh, TCO and, and flexibility perspective. The cloud providers are uh, competing for your business and they will compete on price as well as the services they offer, right? One advanced usage of a multi-cloud environment is being able to arbitrage between clouds. So you could be able to deploy more load to a cloud that's got cheaper CPU costs than uh, the other cloud. So you can actually do spot pricing or you can even think about it on a month to month or day, uh, week to week basis where you can mo move more workload to the cloud that's got the cheaper services at that point in time. Right. That's that's a really advanced use of multi cloud, but it is something that will be happening in the future. WeLab is a, is a prime example of a company that uh, is to, that has a, a, a multi cloud strategy. WeLab is a new financial bank in Hong Kong, a new digital financial bank in Hong Kong. And by deploying um, the cloud agnostic and cloud native solutions from Temenos and UODB, WeLab was able to take advantage of multi-cloud for the benefit of their customers. With a multi-cloud strategy, WeLab was able to deploy um, their solution on top of uh, Terminal's Transact in the shortest time possible, right? So they leveraged uh, features, built-in features and uh, out-of-the-box capabilities of, of Terminal's Transact, and they used NeoDB to deploy in an active-active configuration across GCP and AWS. And so with the multi-cloud strategy for WeLab, WeLab was able to uh, get to market quicker, ensure availability for their, their customers in the case of an outage of a particular cloud, ensure that their data was protected in multiple clouds, which helped them address regulatory concerns that they may have had by being a cloud-only uh, cloud bank. So it, it all starts with the core banking solution. It all starts with Terminals Transact. Right. Terminals Transact is a, a cloud native and cloud agnostic solution. It provides core capabilities that, Tem that WeLab was able to leverage and take advantage of and get to market quickly. Right. And so with Terminals Transact, WeLab um, was able to deliver the value that they needed to their customers in, in months. Right? Instead, of, instead of taking years to, to deploy and, and have a, a, a banking solution, they were able to deploy and be in production in months, right, which is phenomenal. So being cloud agnostic and cloud native means for Temenos being able to run on multiple clouds, right? So they support uh, Microsoft Azure, they support AWS, and they support GCP. But as I mentioned before, they're not just a generic solution that runs in these clouds. They are also cloud native. So being cloud native, they are using services of each of those clouds for both the API gateway, the container orchestration and microservices orchestration, as well as their middleware layers are all going to be native to each of those clouds. So rather than doing sort of a generic solution that works in any, any environment, they have spent time to make sure that their, their Temenos Transact solution is also cloud native, which makes it to be more optimized and more performant in each of those cloud environments. But Temenos runs on top of a database, right? And a distributed database is what sets the foundation for a multi-cloud strategy, right? A distributed database like NeoDB has all the capabilities of a standard SQL database. So it's still ACID, still supports transactions, it's still a SQL dialect, right? But it has the benefits of what you expect from a cloud environment, which is typically a NoSQL database, which is availability, um, being able to support different clouds, and scale out, right? So a distributed database is a database that um, is effectively cloud native that provides the availability and scalability that you need in the cloud dynamically. And that is what NeoDB is. NeoDB is a modern cloud native, cloud agnostic distributed SQL database built for transactional workloads like Temnos Transact, right? NeoDB is different from other databases. It's different from Oracle and SQL Server which are single node systems. Yes, those servers might have an, uh, an, an high availability configuration, which means I've got a, a system that's there in case the first one fails, but it's a fail over. It's an it's a active passive type of configuration. When the database, the, the, the single node database fails, then it has to fail over to the, the next system. With NeoDB as a distributed database, a failure of any one node does not impact the database service. Think of, think of uh, a web load balancer, 
when you lose a, a web server, it doesn't impact the, the availability of that page to your users. The same thing with NeoDB in a distributed database. The loss of a single node does not impact the service or the access to the database. It is fully ACID and SQL compliant, just like Oracle and SQL Server, but it allows you to work in the cloud. And the other thing is it provides the ability to do dynamic scale. So if I need more um, resources for end of month or end of day processing, I can add more nodes to the database to scale out the database as I need them. And then once that processing is done, I can scale back in. So it optimizes your usage of your database resources and you're only paying for what you actually use. So rather than over provisioning the Oracle or SQL Server or, or um, DB2 Server for end of month or year end of year processing, which is only done a few times a year, right? And you, but you're paying for all that capacity all the time. With a distributed database like NeoDB, you are optimize your TCO because you only pay for what you actually need at the time you need it. You don't have to wait until um, you're in the cloud to use NeoDB. NeoDB supports the ability to run the database in the cloud as well as on premises. Okay? So if you start your journey by deploying NeoDB on top of Terminals Transact today, you will have a future-proof database that can get you to the cloud easier. Right? So uh, for example, take a look at this, this image. On the bottom left, you could be running Terminals Transact on-premises, but you're using NeoDB. And so you're getting the benefits of scale out, scale in, you're getting the benefits of uh, availability, and continuous availability on-premises today. And then when you want to move to the cloud, because NeoDB is a distributed database, you can put a couple nodes in the cloud while maintaining the majority of uh, workload on-premises. So you actually have a hybrid deployment at this place. There, is, there isn't a, a lift and shift. There isn't a fail over. There isn't a, a move to the cloud. You've only just sort of added a couple nodes to the cloud environment without any outages to your Temenos environment. And now you have uh, an environment that is spanning both on-premises and in the cloud. And you can keep it that way if you want. You can keep it into a hybrid mo mode where you can use the cloud for burst, right? So again, maybe end of month or end of uh, year processing, you use the cloud excess resources and then remove them when you don't need them, but still maintain the on-premises data. Or you can use it as a stepping stone to move all into the cloud. You can slowly transition workload from on-premises to the cloud by adding more nodes over time. And so that allows you a seamless transition to the cloud without the risk of a lift and shift strategy. So in summary, uh, hybrid and multi-cloud environments are gonna be common. Those companies that look at their cloud strategy and explicitly have a multi-cloud strategy to take advantage of the ability to deploy in multiple clouds for both cost, efficiency, availability, and protection against unplanned outages will be ahead of the, the curve as they sort of think about being agile in today's market. A cloud native and cloud, um, as you think about your multi-cloud strategy, you need to look at solutions and or build solutions that are both cloud native and cloud agnostic. That is key for multi-cloud capabilities. You need to be able to deploy in any cloud, but still take advantages of cloud technologies. And fundamental to a multi-cloud strategy is a distributed SQL database. It is critical to be able to have your data shared and be available across those clouds as a single unit, as a single logical environment, without having to, to, to replicate data between other databases. And you can start that today with NeoDB by deploying NeoDB on-premises. So in summary, um, I wanna thank you for your time. Um, and I want to remind you that NeoDB is here to help you with your Temenos Transact uh, solution being whether or not it's on premises or in the cloud, and it can help you define a, a multi-cloud strategy for your company.